Aloha and thank, uh, welcome to Restaurants of Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Siobhan Garcia. I'm the Executive Assistant for the Hawaii Restaurant Association. And today I am filling in for our Executive Director, Cheryl Matsuoka. Today we're talking with Malia Zanoni, who is the Marketing and Sponsorship Director at International Marketplace. Um, but before I have her introduce herself and give her a quick welcome, I wanted to real quick talk about um, what we're here for, which is the Hawaii Restaurant Association's 75th Anniversary Dine Around. Uh, this will be hosted by the International Marketplace. It will take place on Tuesday, December 6th from 5 to 7.30 p.m. And we will feature uh, a number of our member restaurants, all located within the International Marketplace. So if you haven't already signed up to attend, we ask that you email us at info at hawaiirestaurant.org and we can send you over information on how you can become a participant. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and introduce Malia. Thank you, Malia. Can you please uh, introduce yourself and give us a little bit of background on International Marketplace? Ah, uh, yes, Siobhan, thanks for having me. We really appreciate it. Um, Malia Zanoni, I have the pleasure of being the Marketing and Sponsorship Director at the International Marketplace here in the heart of Waikiki, just outside my window, but you can't see out there because it's kind of my background's blurred. Um, I feel really fortunate to have this role as a Marketing Director for International Marketplace because um, we all are, think are familiar with the original IMP that was this Polynesian village um, that came up in the 1950s and during the kind of golden era of this um, Hawaii, travel to Hawaii and you know, with names like Don the Beachcomber and Don Ho and Duke Kahanamoku really carving the path for tourism to Hawaii and for the story of International Marketplace. So it's a really exciting place to be um, able to market and to be able to continue to tell the story and to carve the path for a new journey um, for this space. Something that people don't often understand or realize is that International Marketplace actually sits on land that is part of the Queen Emma Land Company. Um, it was formerly known as Kalua Okao and um, land of Queen Emma. And so what, why that's important is that um, in the process of the redevelopment and in um, the thought that went into how can we take this space that was certainly a, a tourist destination with kitschy um, Polynesian villages and, and fun tiki culture, how can we take that space, um, remember you know, what put us on the map uh, but then still respect and tell the story of what came before and why it really truly is important to Waikiki and to the continued um, storytelling of Native Hawaiians, of Hawaiian history, Hawaiian culture. And so when we look at this new IMP that was reimagined in 2016, and it's big and fancy and it looks different and we've got, you know, um, three levels of shopping and dining, um, people sometimes say, what happened to, you know, the culture, what happened to the history? And what we like to say is that the culture and history is now more integrated um, and more part of international marketplace than it ever was before. Um, you look at the Banyan tree that's over 165 years old that still stands and it's thriving. The same arborist who's been with that tree for 40 years um, can speak to the fact that the tree is doing better than ever. And um, kind of our, our marquee place in the center. And then as you walk through the center, you see there's really beautifully integrated cultural elements like we have water feature that represents a Pukehau stream coming from Manoa Valley, the Ahupua'a in which we sit. Um, we have the Queen's Court, which honors Queen Emma um, and King Kamehameha IV and her son, Prince Albert. There's a celestial pool in Queen's Court that um, represents Queen Emma's journey to Lake Waiau on the Big Island mm -hmm. after the passing of her son and her um, beloved husband. And then we have the Malka Court, which honors um, the Ahupua of Waikiki. There's beautiful water feature representative of uh, Waikiakua Falls and Apuakehau, which means basket of dew. Um, the chandelier represents that. So there's all of these cultural elements that are tied into the center that people don't realize. I mean, we always try to make sure that we share that because it's really important for us to remember where we came from so that we can continue to um, honor that in, in the things that we do. And so that's kind of like the basis of this redeveloped international marketplace and why I'm so excited to be part of it because it's a story that um, was being told, but maybe not loud enough. And so with this new center, we get to do that. And kind of moving into some of the more fun facts of the, you know, the redevelopment. Obviously we all know that food brings people together, um, especially in Hawaii and Hawaiian culture. Food is super, super important. And so we are so excited to have our grand lanai 
um, our level three. It is the largest collection of open air outdoor restaurants in Waikiki, maybe even on Oahu. I have to look, I have to check into the maps on this. Um, but right now we have a collection of eight restaurants up on the ground and I, all of our restaurant spaces that could be open are open. We have one space that's a raw space that we still activate as an event space. And so the, over the last kind of year and a half, it's been really inspiring to see the restaurants um, who have remained open through the pandemic, the restaurants who have opened like Skybox Tap House during the pandemic, and then the restaurants who um, have opened just afterwards to see their resiliency, to see their creativity, to see their passion in um, overcoming all of the challenges that they faced. I mean, really, really cool to see all the, all the hard work and effort starting to pay off for these restaurants up on our ground and I. Um, and hearing our community say, you know, it's so great that we have bakeries open. We, we go up there for lunch. We go up there for breakfast, dinner with our family. We told our visiting friends to go, um, you know, check out the ground and I. So it's, it's been really awesome for us to be able to just see this transition and see um, it really come to life um, up there on the ground and I. So that being said, <laughs> um, our ground and I is home to, like I said, eight restaurants, hopefully one more in the coming year. Um, but because of that, we do like to host two marquee events a year um, on the Grand Lanai. And so we have our Grand Lanai Restaurant Week, which typically happens in April or May. Mm -hmm. Just like most restaurant weeks, it's um, a week-long celebration. The chef-driven restaurants have really great um, menus that they offer at either special pricing or special add-ons that guests can, can choose from. And then we'll have activations to kind of get generate the buzz and get people out to enjoy whether it's a new restaurant that they haven't tried yet or if it's just them coming back to their favorite restaurants um, on the ground. We have that really cool event. Look for that in spring 2023 at International Marketplace. Um, I promise you it's always going to be the most delicious <laughs> like day here at IFP. And then we also have a mixology month and our mixology months um, this year we moved it to August because August is our anniversary month. And oh, wow. so with Mixology Month, the idea is all about mixology. You know, we know that people love to drink, they love to socialize and, you know, a, a nice, good, strong cocktail brings people together and it gets them talking and that's that's what we like. And then hopefully they, they walk downstairs and they go shopping at all of our stores. Yeah. Um, but our Mixology Month is exactly what it sounds like. It's a month all about um, mixology and libations and highlighting the really the craftsmen who are working in our restaurants to provide these unique uh, experiences to customers that they may not get, um, especially customers who are visiting from like the mainland US, Midwest, they may not get these tropical flavors um, or they may not expect to get some of these really great whiskey cocktails, yeah. um, tequila cocktails that our, our bartenders at Strip Steak and Eating House and Moani um, are putting together for everyone. So throughout that month, um, there's obviously specials on cocktails that we offer um, and then small bites to go along with it. We relaunched our Battle of the Bartenders, which was a huge success. Um, the winning bartender came from Skybox and he won a $2,000 cash prize. Um, wow, so cool. Yeah, awesome. And he just had a six-month-old daughter, so it was so great. His little <laughs> was there, and we were so excited. Um, and his wife was there, so it's really fun to see the community come together at IMP for that. Um, our partners, Kohana Rum, who provided who provided rum for the um, event, were really great to come and step up and you know at the last minute and say, "Hey, like, we want to get involved in this, and mm -hmm. we're looking to grow that." So that we want to highlight our mixologists here at IMP. But I think there's so much talent in the food and beverage industry, in the mixology in industry in Hawaii, that it would be really great for us to be able to expand beyond our center and welcome mm -hmm. you know other people in um, to participate in those types of in those types of programs. Um, that we offer and that we hope our guests enjoy doing. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they all do. <laughs> well, and what's really great is that, um, you know, restaurants all in one location, they're not fighting for the attention, right? They get to kind of be part of something all together. Uh -huh. So those types of events sound like it brings everybody together. They all get to socialize themselves and, and um, kind of become partners as opposed to uh, people competing for the next customer, right? Exactly. And I mean, you, when you think about a visitor, right, they're average at this day of four days here in Waikiki, mm -hmm. where in some sense, people are competing because you, they can't eat at all 10 restaurants, but right. the beauty of the ground and I, that someone can 
know that there's a strip steak here and have no idea that anything else upstairs exists. Uh-huh. And they'll go, oh my gosh, there's a bakery. And yeah. look how big that bakery is. We need to go try that bakery tomorrow. There's pastries in there. Maybe we'll just pick up pastries on our way to the beach after, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's the beauty is that when all the restaurants are there together, they can, you know, customers may not realize that, that what's there and they can kind of check things out. And then for us locals, it's like, you know, one Friday, I might be in a mood to go to Moani. The next Friday, I might be in a mood to go to Eating House. Yeah. Um, I might want to do a date night at Strip Steak, or I might want to have brunch, you know, at Herringbone with my girlfriends. And so we, there's all these options and they're, they're so close together. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been really exciting to see our restaurants come together and, and realize that and realize the power um, that we have as the Grand Lanai and not just as a standalone restaurant. So yeah. speaking to that, we um, have concepted a dining dining pass um, program so customers can come to the customer services. They can visit us online starting in January. Purchase this pass. Where is it? Purchase a pass online. It looks like a festival pass. Has so a little cute. With <laughs> and they can go in and they can kind of like bar hop. You yeah. Know, or restaurant hop on the ground and I. Mm. You catch one Uber. You don't have to Uber from bar to bar. Restaurant <laughs> to restaurant. There you go. There's all of our restaurants and eateries. And you can like, you can hop around. And if you're, you know, if you're feeling it, feeling your drink at strip steak, you can stick there for dinner. Or if you want to go check out the live music at Moani, you can do that. And it's been, you know, we see people doing that. It's been awesome to see, like I said, things just really come alive um, and be able to do things like the dining around event that we folks are working on Mm -hmm. um, for the restaurant association. I mean, it's just, it makes it so convenient for everyone to work together and put together fun events. Yeah. And what's really great about that is, you know, that's so many of our members all in one location to get to feature all of them, which is why we kind of decided on that location, um, not only because of the location itself, right? You know, I mean, it's central. There's, the, as we all know, too, parking is a really big deal in Waikiki. Mm-hmm. So, so much parking. There's so many options. Um, but, you know, really to be able to highlight and feature a bunch of our members all at one time is kind of a big deal, you know, everybody gets to participate and, and, um, you know, be part of the success of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. And, and, um, you know, we're really looking forward to it, really excited. And um, we will be putting out more details as far as the uh, restaurant participating restaurants and their um, pupus that they'll be featuring, but keep the mystery a little bit going. So, you know, I've, we chose the location also for the reason that you said, which was the history of the international marketplace. And as we've mentioned, this is our 75th anniversary. So combined, right, we have this history together Uh that I think we are really excited to celebrate and to showcase, Um, you know, so with that, I, we've talked about the different restaurants and the Grand Lanai, and we've talked about our event. Do you guys host other events? And um, if, if you do, how would somebody go about getting in contact with you guys? Yes. So I mentioned we have eight open restaurants on the ground and I um, right now we have a vacant space or a raw space rather um, that we've converted into kind of an outdoor lanai event space area. And so um, anyone who's interested in activating that space, they just shoot us an email, um, give us a call and they can hold about 100 to 150 people, depending on the style of event. If it's a stand up cocktail Um, 150 people sometimes we overflow into the common area space a little bit Um, you can set up music a bar we always encourage um, everyone to to use our restaurants for catering Mm -hmm. uh, because they're right there and it's super super easy right but yeah it's 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 as simple as just reaching out and and kind of having a talk story about what the customer has in mind and how we can support them Um, but like I said very easy to do and you folks are doing your event. We just we just hosted our own event for the concierge. We're doing an event um, in December with some of our uh, tourism partners. So we host events there all the time, and we welcome people who are looking for a unique event space in the heart of Waikiki, like you said, with easy access to parking. <laughs> um, yeah. Definitely, yeah. And then we're we're activating that space actually for New Year's Eve. So our again talking about the restaurants coming together and the restaurants realizing the power, um, the you know the power of the collective. Right. The restaurants came to us and said, hey, we think that we could do a New Year's Eve event. We think IMP would be a great, you know, spot. And selfishly, I'm like, well, of course it is. It's where yeah. multiple outdoor <laughs> open air collection of restaurants in Waikiki. What are we going to do? Yeah. And so we are 
um, working on a New Year's Eve event. It'll be our first ever New Year's Eve event on the ground and I. Um, we've got six of our restaurants who are gonna be participating. And it'll kind of, if you think about it, like a block party style of event mm -hmm. where you buy the ticket, you have access to go in and out of all these restaurants, you have access to the specialty cocktails and specialty menus that they'll be serving that night. Um, so a very fun a social event. And again, playing into the whole idea of the ground and I, ground and I being a walkable space Right. And it's meant for you know communal experience that's what we're going to be doing for new year's eve so we've got some really exciting announcements coming up i can't say them yet because i don't have i don't even have contracts inked yet on this um, <laughs> but stay tuned because you're going to want to people are going to want to come out to the ground and i for new year's eve uh it's going to be super exciting and just a fun elevated cocktail uh walk around pop in and out you know and enjoy culinary enjoy entertainment type of experience well, that's that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun and we can't wait to hear more details and please you know as as you get more details, please let us know we would love to let everybody um, in our community know that this is available and it's up and coming and as you mentioned you know the outdoor spaces is still such a big um, deal you know, even uh -huh. though we're kind of coming out of COVID, we still have. Um, a lot of people who are concerned and so you know the fact that they're able to be outside and and mingle and talk story mm -hmm. you know is so great and um and I, I like I said too I like that you can you know a lot of us want to go and just try some of the different places and this kind of gives it to you all in one place you know go here for a poo poo go here for a different one you know go here for a drink and it offers it in one convenient location so that's um i don't know what's not to love about it and you know <laughs> such a beautiful space too they did such a good job with reimagining everything yeah and the the kind of the variety in the collection of restaurants is really great it's pretty diverse in terms of we've got shrimp steak which is you know going to be chef michael mina it definitely has this up, upscale mainland um component to it and experience to it and then next door we've got lily hill bakery which is really approachable for families. Locals obviously love Lili Hill Bakery, know Lili Hill Bakery, but it's always fun for us to share with our visitors. Hey, are you aware of Lili Hill Bakery? Do you know what mm -hmm. they're famous for? And get people in there to experience that. And then Eating House, Chef Roy Yamaguchi, who doesn't love Chef Roy and everything he has to offer. Um, and so that concept there really caters to our you know local flavors um, with a kind of elevated herringbone California coastal. So you've got fresh fish, you've got food, you've got mm -hmm. oy the oysters. Who doesn't love oyster hour? <laughs> Wait, sorry, okay, come on. Um, and then next door to them is Moani, and Moani's brought in, you know, a really strong local audience to the center. It's awesome to see um, a local family, the Kiolanui's, come to come mm -hmm. into Waikiki and really own it, and um, you know, generate buzz that wasn't mm -hmm. there before. So it's been we've loved having Moani there. They did a big Halloween event that was like, oh, it was like a party over there. <laughs> um, and then Skybox Top House. I mean, talk about resiliency they opened you know kind of like mm -hmm. for the tail end of the pandemic but it's the same operators um a shore fire and mm -hmm. they saw an opportunity and they went for it the concept is really really great they cater to visitors and locals they've got you know it's a sports bar they've got who know I, I can't remember how many <laughs> TVs they have they have all these tvs in there yeah um, my husband was just there the other day with his friends it's awesome you, know, <laughs> you can watch all the sports games when when the game started at six in the morning they're open at six in the morning um, and they've got the branding is just really, really strong and they have great food. So it's awesome to see them thriving and doing well. They have this really cool outdoor space that mm -hmm. kind of looks like a tailgate space. For those of you who haven't seen it, you've got to go check it out. They've got a whole food truck out there and like uh, spigots of, it looks like a beer, beer. Oh yeah. Tap, but it's, it's a fountain. Don't drink it. It's not beer. <laughs> and then Shorefire, you know, through the pandemic, Shorefire was so creative in the way that they operated, the way that they, um, said let's support local musicians let's bring music musicians into the into the restaurant let's charge a ticket price that ticket price goes straight to paying the musicians people came they supported they were sold out every weekend i celebrated my birthday there it was mike love played i think it was um and, you know they had natty vibes they've got all kinds of great artists who come in and played on their lanai and that sort of i think really put shorefire um top of mind for a lot of the local customers who didn't know what was going on in waikiki mm -hmm great job doing that and then we just recently opened cracking kitchen um and they're like one of those seafood cross seafood bakes great mm -hmm. for families just really interactive and fun approachable price points and you know adding to the, that overall experience 
just kind of rounding out the diversity of the ground that I has been great. And then downstairs we've got Kuhi Avenue Food Hall. So if someone's looking for something quick and fast, yeah, another whole, like the whole thing, another variety of food you can have. Yeah, exactly. So we're, we're lucky here that there's just so much variety um, and that everyone has been really great and supportive of each other's success. Mm -hmm. I have a meeting at two o'clock today to go over the New Year's, Eve of, New Year's Eve event. And it's so awesome to have all of these amazing restaurant operators come together and share their ideas, share, um, you know, their experience with mm -hmm. each other and support each other. Like it's, it's incredible. Right. Like right. the work that they're all doing together is, is really impressive. And I'm proud and honored to be able to be part, a small part of that. Um, and thankful that they have, you know, folks like the Hawaii Restaurant Association to continue their su to support them in that space. Yeah, well, thank you, you know, and, and thank you so much for taking the time to really um, talk about international marketplace. I think, as you've mentioned, right, it, it was before such a, um, what well, we thought of it as like a tourist location and destination. And, um, you know, to see a lot of the locals, especially during the pandemic, come out and really support yeah. Um, you know, we forget sometimes, especially in Waikiki, right, because it's so touristy, we do forget that locals are still needed in these places, right? They're wanted. They, you know, it's it's not only for uh, people locals coming. Locals make it cool. Visit. Yeah. You know, like, where the locals go? Yeah, exactly. Like, like where are the locals, what, what beer are the locals drinking? Where are the locals yeah. eating? You, travel, you want to know, that's the good stuff. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and it's so great to have you guys as our partner as well, you know, I mean, um, to really be supporting the restaurant, supporting us as well. And so in turn, we want to make sure that we support you guys too. So thank you so much for um, joining us and giving us, you know, a little background and some history, but also um, encouraging everybody to get out and still continue to support our restaurants. Because we know even though uh, we're somewhat getting back to normal. We're not there. There's so many other factors and um, happy to support. And we're so excited to have everyone at the 75th anniversary dine around. Um, so thank you again for Malia um, for joining you. us. Of course, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. And again, as we mentioned, our 75th uh, dine around um, anniversary event will be on Tuesday, December 6th from 5 to 7.30 p.m. And if you are interested in joining us and coming to celebrate, please email us at info at hoyrestaurant.org. And as always, the HRA is the voice of Hoy's restaurants and food service industry. Again, if you would like more information, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.